Hello, in this video I'm going to be taking a look at Isotope RX10 and Isotope Ozone 10. Ozone 10 came out today and RX10 came out last week. I upgraded to Music Production Suite 5 on the promise that I would get the RX10 standard upgrade when it came out and also the Ozone 10 advanced upgrade when it came out. And in this video, I'm going to try and determine or give my opinion on whether or not I think that that was worth the money and whether you should upgrade these. I'm also going to share some other opinions and criticisms maybe later on in the video. But basically, RX-10, very minor upgrade from, or minor update really, from RX-9. For example, in RX-9, they introduced ARA2 support, but it was only supported in Logic Pro. I held off on upgrading to RX9 because I expected them to put ARE2 support for Cubase and Studio One, and it never came. So I thought they have to put it in the RX10. It'd be ridiculous if they didn't. And it's still not here. There's still no ARE2 support in any other DAW but Logic Pro. So I'm not sure what the developers have been doing for the last year. And I'm not really sure why RX10 deserves a sort of new revision. Because it like if I load up the what's new, and for some reason the what's new is broken, but uh, you've got a repair assistant, which is basically the same as the Neutron 4 one, the one that was introduced in Neutron 4. It could be useful if you don't really know how to use the program, I guess, but really you're going to get much better results if you use these on the right hand side. If you're not familiar with RX at all, it could be a useful starting point. Then we have, you can navigate audio with text. So if you're editing podcasts, I guess that could be useful. From what I'm hearing from people that have tried to use this on podcasts and stuff, that it, it doesn't really work particularly well. So that's that. Then you have a dynamic de-hum with adaptive mode. So say you were recording something and you had a dodgy mic lead without a ground, and you had a ground loop hum. That could come in handy for reducing that hum or eliminating it. So I guess that's cool. Then, oh, we got an image this time. Then we have improved selection feathering. So I guess that's cool for finer, finer editing. And that's it. So no ARE2 support for DAWs other than Logic. And no other modules have been improved or anything as far as I know. Um, I did test this out on an M1 MacBook Air, and it was running quite well on that, so it seems like they put a bit of work into getting it to run nice and smoothly on Apple Silicon. But other than that, there's nothing really to write home about. So yeah, I guess I'll move on to Ozone 10. Okay, so here I am in Studio One 5. I've got a mastering project set up that I've previously worked on, and I've got Meter plugs dynameter, which I use just to maintain the dynamic range in the music. I've got it set on the limited preset. So the target is eight and the minimum value that this should be at is eight. It might dip down lower than that in some songs, depends on, on how loud and how much sort of of a wall of sound you maybe have in the song. But generally speaking, eight's a good value. I have Ozone 9 set up, so I've got just equalizer, dynamic EQ, these have all been just set up manually, and the maximizer, which I've set up manually just to sort of hit the target of it. As well as that, I'm also using Sooth 2. Let me just listen back to that. Virtual tape machines. Which I'm not hitting too hard. And then I had the UAD Precision K stereo. Let's see what that was doing.
pretty subtle effect. And let me see. And that went down to seven there, which is okay, considering this part is very, very noisy. I could bring the threshold on the limiter back a bit. As well as that, I'm using isotope tonal balance control just to kind of get an overview of the mix. So it's probably a little bit too bright around between 2K and 4K. And as well as that, I'm using VSX from Slate in HD linear mode, HD linear two, and good hertz can opener studio, just to add a little bit of crosstalk or crossfade into HD linear two, just gives it a little bit more life to the sound. And now I'm using the mix engineer lifelike preset. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is just bypass ozone nine and load in ozone 10. And then I'll pick the loudest part of that song. So it's identified the genre. This impact module's new. It's like a, a multi-band compressor. This is the more classic view. <laughs> DQ curve that it's done there. It's like a smiley face. Then another new module is the stabilizer. Which I think sort of aims to be a bit like Gulfoss from Sound Theory. It can boost or cut. Seems to work pretty well. So here dynamic EQ, I normally go in and just tweak that myself. So if I go in here and I'll just solo that frequency, bring it down, see what's eating into the low end a bit.
the new clipper and the maximizer is probably what's actually driving this down. So I'll try disabling that. This song's quite noisy, so I actually think the clipper sounds quite good on it. It's bringing out that guitar solo a little bit, making everything sound a bit more forward. Though it is hurting the dynamic range a little bit. Another thing, I'll just actually create another instance of Ozone 10 to demonstrate this. You really want to choose the area of the song quite carefully that you're going to use to analyze with the master assistant. Otherwise, you're going to have a really skewed kind of perspective. So say, for example, I use the verses here. So if I look, the EQ curve is quite different, a lot more bass being cut there. The maximizer will be very skewed. So when this section comes in, it's dipping down to 6 in dynamiter. Might even go further. If I put the clipper on, it's definitely going to go further. There's dipping down to five. And just tonally, it, it hasn't really made as good decisions in terms of like the EQ. So yeah, you really need to kind of pick your section of the song usually the loudest section but actually sometimes you might want to get the tonal balance from a verse or a chorus and then adjust the limiter later so the threshold is kind of where you want it but uh, you do need to be quite careful about how you choose these things in ozone i found when using the assistant i think the same is true for neutron and other intelligent plugins but uh, what we'll do is just do a quick comparison between what Ozone 9 did and what Ozone 8 has done. We'll start from the start and just hear. Oh, my lover, won't you please listen? No, I hear it all the damn time. So straight away I'm actually liking what Ozone 10 has done quite a bit more. Baby, let's feel the desire, let's dive 
head is dipping down to 7, but I think for that section, that's okay. It's quite a distorted song, so you're not going to really notice. So yeah, my impression there is that actually that is sounding quite good. My first impression of this wasn't great. I was using it in Windows 11, and for some reason I was getting lots of very buggy, glitchy behavior when I tried to load in the music rebalance just to sort of bring a vocal down very slightly. It really went a bit crazy. The audio slowed down to about 50%, and the CPU meter was just going crazy. It was hitting peaks constantly. So yeah, I have another track here where I've already run Ozone 10 on it. And I've got Ozone 9 set up as well, so I'll just do another comparison between the, what it sounds like compared to Ozone 9. So again, it's hitting seven, but I think for this particular song, that works. And I think the clipper complements it as well. This might even dip down to six. This section doesn't have much in terms of dynamics. It seems to be sitting quite comfortably in 7, that's okay. Dip down to six. Okay, so I'll do a comparison between that and Ozone 9. Again, I'm not sure if it's the clipper or maybe it's a combination of the new stabilizer module, impact, and the clipper, but it does sound a lot more sort of forward and a bit more present.
just what Ozone Tens doing there. It seems to be opening the mix up quite a lot more. So yeah, I like what that was doing on that particular track as well. I think it's an improvement. Then I have this track set up where I can compare what Ozone 9 and Ozone 10 were doing, but also if I just turn off the maximizer in Ozone 10, and then I can compare the maximizer in 9, 10, and also Smart Limit. So I'll just make sure that they're all set up. Minus one. Minus one. And minus one. So they're all set up and they should all be set to sort of hit the same threshold here. And I've turned off the clipper on the Ozone 10 module. So yeah, let's have a listen to see what the difference is like. So this is Ozone 9. Ozone 10. Ozone 9. Ozone 10. And then we'll switch to Smart Limit. Zone 10. Now, Smart Limit has saturation on, so I'm not sure if that's the same as the Soft Limit or something similar. So maybe I'll do a comparison here between the Ozone Maximizer with the Soft Limit on. Try driving it just a little bit harder and smart limit. Ozone 9. Obviously the Ozone 9 doesn't have the clipper. So it's a bit more dynamic. But not as loud sounding. The saturation on the soft limit seem to definitely negatively impact the dynamic range, but it has quite a nice character to it, the one in Ozone 10. It has a little bit more attitude or something than the smart limit one. So 
So just one last time, I'll, I'll turn the clipper off. I'll just compare with Ozone 9. So this one's Ozone 9, and then this one that I'm going to switch to is Ozone 10. And then I'll just turn the saturation completely off. Prepare it. I like the low end on the ozone tan better than what Smart Limits doing. But I would say Ozone 9 and 10 are pretty comparable. The real standout there is the soft clip. Which does have a really nice character to it. What's in the way now? It's just my mind. Oh my my, what's in the way now? It's my monkey mind. So yeah, I think that uh, the Ozone 10 limiter is actually really good with the, the soft clip. Smart Limit, I think, does something very similar with the saturation, but it also does really clean very nicely. Overall as well, I think that the stabilizer and the impact modules are pretty pretty cool additions. One thing that I've seen people be quite upset about, and it's justifiable I think, is that they've removed the standalone version of Ozone with this new release, which I think is a bit of a mistake. In the past when I've been using the standalone version of Ozone 9, I found that it hasn't been particularly stable. So for example, if I do a master assistant and then tweak it and then I want to load in a third party plugin and I load in the Ampex or the Sooth 2 or Gulf Foss, it would crash the desktop quite often. So I wonder have they retired it partly because it wasn't the most stable host and uh, they just didn't have the resources to put into trying to get it to work as smoothly and stably as they could. Which is a shame because I'm using Ozone 10 Advanced but in Ozone 10 standard, you don't get the stabilizer module, you don't get the impact module. Basically, you're only getting the imager and the new maximizer are the only new modules, which might not be worth it for people who are on standard. It might be worth upgrading to Ozone 10 Advanced if you can get a good deal on it. But uh, much like RX standard, it's a very, very minimal upgrade. And honestly, in my opinion, I think that RX10 should have included ARE2 support for QBS and Studio One or whatever DAWs support it, not just Logic. And I, I think even the implementation of ARE2 support in Logic is, is limited to maybe a couple of different modules. So they're falling behind in that regard because I think that uh, Acon Digital and Spectral Layers from Steinberg are both supported in ARE2 DAWs. So they may lose a bit of ground there. In terms of Ozone, it now requires a host. So whether you load it up as the final insert in your DAW or you use something like Studio One that has a dedicated master environment, which is great, or Wavelab or something like that. But it's necessary now, unfortunately. Though if you have a previous version of Ozone 9, you can still obviously use that to do masters, but you're not going to have any of these new features. So yeah, it's a little bit disappointing that way. Also, I had weird instability issues in Windows 11 when I was testing this in Studio 1.5. And I might put up a video just demonstrating that. I'm kind of hoping that it was a fluke or maybe it was because the sample buffer was too low. Though it was working fine with Ozone 9 at the same sample buffer, so I'm not sure what the deal was there. And it did seem to sort of internally switch sample rates when I loaded up the master rebalance in 
windows and it made the audio playback half the speed and then the CPU meter went from here to like just here and was just like like going crazy. So not great, but if I do find that that's a repeatable bug, I'll submit a video to Isotope support and hopefully they can fix it. But yeah, I do think that it's a, a decent step forward for Ozone 10. The new modules sound good. Clipper sounds really good. And uh, yeah, I'm torn now because Smart Limit was my go-to limiter. And now I'm probably going to find myself sort of reaching for both of these just to test them both out and see how well they work on the various material. I do think it's worth checking out. RX-10, on the other hand, I don't know if you've got RX-9, you're not really going to gain anything that significant from this upgrade. I'm not convinced really even that RX-10 deserved a new version, given that it hasn't really added anything significant. And it certainly didn't add in the AORE2 support, which is, I find personally very disappointing because it would have been really handy to have that without having to use sort of RX Connect to bounce stuff out and then back again. But it does seem very well optimized on Apple Silicon RX10. I haven't tried Ozone 10 on Apple Silicon yet, but I'd imagine it runs pretty well there too. So yeah, hopefully you find this video helpful and I shall be back with more videos soon. Cheers.